What's going on everyone? In this episode we're going to continue building our sweet app which is a crypto portfolio calculator and this will allow you to choose multiple cryptocurrencies from a drop down list. So let's say we had Bitcoin and Ethereum. We can then put how much we own of each of these. So let's say we own 50 Bitcoin and let's go with 72 Ethereum. This is what each one of those are worth and then it'll sum it up down at the bottom. The goal of this video is to go through and clean some of this up to give a better user experience and then display a pie chart showing those different cryptocurrencies. So we're going to use React Chart.js2 and it's going to look something like this. However, instead of just colors and a number, it'll have that cryptocurrency and the value. So that way we can see very easily which cryptocurrency is the biggest or the smallest percentage in our portfolio. So the first thing that was challenging me with this is that when you add a new cryptocurrency, it defaults to zero. So that's fine and all, actually, you know, that makes sense. But when you click it, it puts the cursor there. So then you actually have to delete and then type in a value, which isn't a very nice way of working with this. So I wish this just defaulted to empty. And I was struggling with the best way to do this, so if there's some secret, definitely drop it in a comment in the comment section below. But the answer for me was just to switch the default number from zero to not a number, which is actually kind of funny, but this is of type number. So it works. So everything works out with the types and we don't get any problems. And now when we add a new cryptocurrency, let's just do a refresh. We will go in here, select a cryptocurrency. It defaults to being empty. And then we can go in and type a value as a much better experience. You know, I was thinking of maybe working with default value, but we want this to be tied to this amount and wasn't really sure how to show the amount Let's say this defaulted to undefined here. Well, then we get errors and we have to go through and fix up all of our code. And the reality is when we actually delete the value here, that is what is shown up as the value. So if I delete this, you can see that the quantity of how many Ethereum I own is NAN or not a number. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this pie chart. What we're going to need for this is data this is going to be passed in when we create the pie chart. We're not going to have the various settings we had in previous videos, which we defined in this options here. So what we'll do is we will just remove this comment and then get rid of this entire options here. So we'll keep data. Then we'll just change some of our imports. So going off of here, we will need to import pie instead of line if you are following the earlier videos. And we will need to register this arc element which will need imported as well. And the register is going to be limited to just arc element, tooltip, and legend. So we can clean this up a bit. So let's first import arc element and add that to our register right here. And then we can get rid of these extra ones we're not going to need since we're not using the line chart. Now when it comes to the type, well, we're not going to have chart data of type line, instead we're going to have chart data of type pi. And our import is going to be import pi from React Chart.js. Now let's go down to where we were creating the line component. We have that section commented out, and just so I don't forget, I'm going to change this to pi. And we're not going to need the options passed in either. Perfect. Let's uncomment this section and just see how it goes. Pretty much if you're jumping in, you'll just need to check to see if data has a value, which we can assign data a value when we change the different cryptocurrencies that we own. If data does have a value, then we're going to render this pie chart. So going off of that now, let's see what happens when we select a cryptocurrency and put in some value, nothing is actually happening and that's because we're not actually assigning anything to data when we change our cryptocurrency quantities. So we'll just need to make sure we add that in. Now the easiest way to do that is to create a use effect that depends on the selected state. So pretty much any time our selected cryptocurrencies or how many we own changes, we will have that use effect execute. So let's scroll up to the top and actually already have a very simple use effect defined that's just printing out selected. We had something pretty similar where we were doing this in an earlier video, setting data inside of a use effect. So you can use this code for inspiration, but it's pretty long. So what we're gonna do is just start from scratch and then afterwards we can delete that comment. But as this is now, it's going to console log selected in all caps. So if we take a look, 
and we change our portfolio, you can see selected is printed right here. So all we will need to do is invoke set data and it'll look something like this here. You can also use the example from the pie chart as well for what data should look like. So let's go ahead and copy this object that they are assigning to data and that's what we're going to pass into set data. So I will take that or you can just type it out if you wish and let's head back over and inside of this use effect we'll say set data and pass in that object. We're not getting any problems so let's just make sure that this shows up heading over to our site you can see that we get the pie chart. We only want this pie chart to show up when we have some cryptocurrencies in our portfolio. So to avoid setting data before we actually have anything inside of selected, we can just check at the beginning here if selected.length is zero, we can just return. And now it's not going to show up on initial page load until we actually select a cryptocurrency. Now all we need to do is change how we are defining data. So instead of hard coding the data and the labels, we will get those from the selected array. So taking a quick peek at what that'll look like, if we add a few elements in here and give them an amount, we can take a look at the selected array. For the labels, we will want to go through all of the objects in this array and grab the name. And then for the actual values, we will want to grab the owned multiplied by the current price. We can do this fairly easily with map. So where we have labels, we will remove this array and instead say selected.map and pass in a function here where the parameter each iteration will contain one of the selected elements. And we can just return, actually getting rid of the curly braces, we can return s.name. Without the curly braces, it's an implicit return, but it'll only work with a single line. So if you need to do something more complex, you'll add those curly braces back in. And then for the data, we're going to do the same exact thing, except just change what data we want. So selected.map, passing in an arrow, and we will just say s dot, and make sure we define that s as a parameter there, s dot owned, multiplied by s dot current price. Saving this, let's take a look now, and it actually appears to be working. So you can see, our Ethereum value 67,000 versus BNB is 8,000, so the ratio is much bigger to Ethereum, and you can visually see that very quickly with this pie chart. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go ahead and add a cryptocurrency and see what happens. Let's go ahead and add Polygon. Currently we have zero Polygon, so it doesn't even show up. If we change our quantity to say four, well it's only $3, so it's a really tiny sliver in there. So let's go ahead and say something like 4,000 or 40,000, and you can see it starts to take up a bigger portion of the pie. You can remove any of these if you wish, and it'll remove that section, and then just split it across the sum of these two values. Now I wanted to experiment. I'm actually not sure what will happen if we add a bunch of these because we have our colors defined here. So I'm not sure if it'll cycle through these or what. Let's just add a bunch. We'll say we have, you know, well, we gotta add a ton of that because it's basically worthless. Mm, what else looks fun? Look at some amp in here. Right, let's add a couple more. Kava, hey, that's the name of my puppy. She's not really a puppy anymore, but she deserves the world. So we'll add a bunch of her. And let's add one more here. And let's make sure we have BNB enabled there. We will add synthetics. And you can see here now it is repeating a color. So Ethereum and synthetics is sharing a color. So I actually haven't done much research on the colors. So maybe there's a way to generate colors. If we got rid of these all together, I think it'll just use the same color every time, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's try this. We'll say Bitcoin and Ethereum and give them some values. And uh, it's just gray, definitely not what we want. So you'll probably want to look how you can generate colors or just for example, use random numbers for these different values to get different colors. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the way our chart looks. Let me know down below what you think about it. I think we could just clean up some general formatting to make this page prettier, you know, for example, adding in the commas to these numbers here and actually saying what this means. So maybe like total 
value owned, and then here you could say complete portfolio value. That's all I got in this episode. Hopefully it's been fun. I enjoyed this little project. It's pretty cool. I like doing things with cryptocurrency and numbers, so showing charts and stuff is pretty fun. I'd say so. However, I am definitely eager to be doing something new because this is boring. So let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out the next episode. I will see you there.